Yeah, alrighty, I thought I'd just show today how I like to render my smoke and, and emission passes for use in uh, game dev. Um, you know, typically we need a, a color texture, which would be your smoke, and that's you know, by lighting and everything, and then you need a, uh, an emission texture for your emission. And preferably, of course, you'd want like the hot parts of your fireball to be your, your emission, and the, you know, uh, smoke or you know, not currently on fire parts to be smoke uh, at least that's the way I see it and uh, the way I set this up is I'll start here with a little fireball sim this is uh, you can actually pull up the sparse effects tab up here and drag in an aerial explosion it'll, it'll get you most of the way to where I'm at right now um, it's got to thank for this sparse pack yeah so you know we we have these new uh, pyro bake volume, you know, uh, materials that you can apply. I like them a lot. Most people do, um, but you don't have to use this technique with just within the, the the pyro bake volume. You can actually use it within, you know, any shader. Um, basically, what I'm doing here is I'll just take the the sim and run it through kind of like a, a stock one with you know I I like it. You know, I'll, I'll tweak the intensity to what I want it to be, but this is what I found to work for this. Um, the density that I liked, and then I, I use full color, um, full light to try and get the, the most color out of my sim because you don't want like a fully, as much as possible. You you don't want to kill yourself in color range, so you can remap that later on. Um, and then on the flip side, we have this emission pass, right? And the, the main difference here is that our smoke color is fully black. Um, this helps us remove it from the like the look of the sim uh, but their density is the same right because we still want the smoke itself to be occluding our our fire as much as possible if, if you don't if you just like kill your density then you're gonna get like a blob and it's not gonna be true to form anyways so really what we're doing is we're kind of like matting this in real time right kind of um, and then as you can see here I just remap all the it's the same intensity as I liked in here but it's just fully white or you know it's it's across a gradient now and what this gradient does is it allows us to remap these colors within the editor so I can get you know the same look that we, we, we'd be getting um, whatever. the same look that we'd be getting with like a a colored uh, fireball but we can now apply like whatever color we want so we can do we can use this for multiple assets we don't have to load in this texture multiple times pretty pretty smart for game dev um, so the next big thing right here is we get um I what I'll do is I'll just separate those pyro looks into their individual files and this just helps me keep everything separated and, and easy to work with when I do the final render. And as you can see here, if I go to out, the big reason is because in a render smoke here, um, if you go to objects, I force this to render the explosion smoke out. So you, even if it's turned off or whatever, it's always gonna render that node. Uh, that's, the, that's just how this is set up, and then you know I use my candidate lights, and the candidate lights, of course, are just coming from the sun for what I like to do. Um, typically, for larger scale explosions, I find that works fine. And then for our emission, I'll just force my object to be the emission out, and then I have no lights in here, and of course I have no lights so that you know we don't get this weird data that isn't true to our our actual simulation. And then if you render both of those, you should end up getting something like this. And as you can see here, we get one kind of like fully colored sim, you know, and we know that this is about what it's gonna look like an engine. Maybe not one to one, but it's gonna be close. And then as you can see over here, we get a a pretty close approximation of where we'd want all this color to be. But now it's in gray, it's separated. We can just plug this into a mission and then we can use this texture for our um, our color. But as you can see here, we're still colored and you might think like, okay, well then I should just add like white and gray to this. But really that's bad. It's gonna look bad, you know, uh, in reality. Like it doesn't actually add anything because it's just smoke. So really, you want your mission to be completely separate from your smoke, and the way that you can do that is you can just go into here in your channel copy, um, and set your target to be color. You pull in your pyro smoke. Now you just have your smoke. 
So now, as you can see here, we have a, a, a texture for our smoke and a texture for our emission. And this emission will comp really well on, into the smoke and you know, on the smoke and really fake a lot of the lighting and stuff so that we'd expect off of, a, off of a simulation such as this. Uh, and then of course, in game we're gonna get something like, you know, like one of these guys, so. That's just kinda, it's kinda the way I like to approach it. Um, I can show you the shader real quick, I guess. Or maybe not. But the shader is really simple. It's literally just, oh, no, it's a fire. It's literally just, you know, as I was saying, our smoke, our emission, plugged into a gradient, multiplied, like nothing, nothing overly complex. Um, I would, I would actually go further than this if I was, if I was using this as like a real, uh, real thing. But for for just developing of, uh, you know, for for a cursory overlook of a, of a shader that I use this approach with, this is what that looks like. So, yeah. That's how you get great looking explosions really quickly.